Hello everyone. Today I want to share with you how I'm planning for maternity leave. Um, because how on earth am I supposed to find time to run a business when I have a toddler and a newborn? Uh, that's that's the million dollar question. I know some of you have done that and I would love your thoughts and input and to hear your stories. But I want to share the things I've considered, such as how long do I want to take off, how much money does my business need while I'm on maternity leave, and how will I come back on maternity leave. That's my cat Flash. He decided to come hang out with me in the office just as I was coming going live. Um, so hi, Michelle. So nice to see you. Um, I'm Karen Hewson, your productivity and system strategist, and I help creative mompreneurs to simplify, streamline, automate, and outsource their businesses so that you can spend more time on the things that matter, on growing your business, taking time out for family, and spending time just for yourself to turn that mum brain off and have some quiet time. So um, yes, maternity leave. <clears throat> So I'm pregnant with my second child. My toddler's two and a half, and she's fabulous and um, has started really looking after her dollies like their babies, which is gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> but the big thing was, what do I do with my business? How long do I want to take off? And, you know, at least with a second baby, you kind of have a benchmark. <laughs> so I had to look back, first of all, and said, okay, what did I do? with my first child. Hi Travis, hi Cassie, this is very exciting. Um, and so I started my business when my daughter was six months old and my mum was able to come over one day a week and look after her down the other end of the house and I would hide away in the office and do my work and work with clients and then when she needed to be breastfed, I would go pop out and do that and kind of back and forth and that worked really well um, and I've been able to grow that um, to work two and a half days a week where my toddler's taken care of by other people and I can switch that mum brain off and work. Um, <clears throat> I've obviously had to change my working week a lot because I know I did a live a while ago talking about how to put your, how I put my family first and put um, my toddler first and her needs and her childcare and development and everything else. Um, and now that I'm looking at adding another baby to the family. Um, it feels like all those <laughs> lovely plans, of course, get thrown out the window. And I don't know what this baby is going to be like, how they're going to sleep, what their naps are going to be like, everything like that, to um, try to figure out when to work. So what I did was looked at those benchmarks and said, okay, it was at six months for my daughter that it felt doable <laughs> to have a day where I could focus on my business. So that was what I was thinking, at least for for this baby is like, all right, let's give myself six months of no expectations, not that I won't work, um, but just no expectations to really have regular business hours, be working with clients or be setting sort of projects for myself. And then when I did the math, because the baby's due in May, it turned out that May plus six months is November. And I always take December and January off to spend with family, to enjoy summer here in New Zealand, to um, to have Christmas, to be able to, um, you know, not add all of the Christmas logistics to business logistics and life logistics. Um, and so I was like, oh, okay, so if I do six months and then I want to take those months off, I'm really looking at starting back officially um, in February 2019 which freaked me out to start with. <laughs> it's just like almost taking um, a year off from, from your business. Um, but when I was looking at it, I really didn't want to set expectations um, that I wasn't ready for. I want to be able to choose and, and sort of feel along the way, you know, what's best for the family, what's best for me, what's best for this new baby and how, how they operate um, and be able to, ease myself back into it when once I have that extra information because as much as I would like to create um, ideal work week schedules um, and kind of guess at when the baby will be napping and when I could have child care for my toddler that um, is all hypothetical <laughs> completely completely hypothetical um, it's great to have ideas um, and have options but really until um, until the little baby's on the outside, you kind of can't um, 
can't know all of that. So that was my big driver was making sure I wasn't setting myself up to come back too early. I was giving myself that flexibility and um, had a bit of a think about what could that ideal work, work week look like. But ultimately, um, yeah, I, I came to the decision that I didn't want to try guess something um, before the baby came, that I would give myself that um, six month window and start to see what's going on. Um, the second big question after I sort of established, you know, ideally this is what I want is how will my business operate while I'm, while I'm on maternity leave? And I've already mentioned I've given myself the option to work. <laughs> it's like I don't, um, I can work on projects and I've been um, pulling together a big long list of, you know, all the upgrades that you don't necessarily have time to do in your business when you're working um, with one-on-one -on -one clients and taking orders and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, but that's the, those are the sort of projects that don't have a real specific deadline attached to them. I can pick them up, I can put them back down again, and I can still stay connected to my business, still be really investing. Thanks, Emma. Really investing and um, making progress in my business without adding that um, that expectation and that demand on my time um, that I have to be available a certain week. Um, other things around how will my business operate, um, I don't want to completely disappear off the face of the earth <laughs> for that time, um, so I had a look at my consistent content. So all through last year, um, I was doing up to three Facebook Lives a week, uh, blog posts and newsletter going out every week, um, and I still wanted to have that visibility. I still wanted my existing audience, you guys, to have that um awareness of, oh yes, Karen's still here, Karen's doing this, she's on maternity leave, but look at the um, really valuable resources she already has hanging out here. So there, there's still that awareness going on and people don't like forget about you. <laughs> um, and it, it also I think will help um, keep a certain amount, shorten the time at which I need to spend kind of coming back and communicating and building those relationships up again because um, people will still have been hearing from me um, on a regular basis. But that regular, ba regular basis will change. You may have noticed, I don't know if you've noticed, um, I already switched my schedule from weekly to fortnightly over December, January and have been carrying that through um, these early months before I go on maternity leave because I want to have the time to you know schedule some stuff out and have the time to um, create more content for the rest of the year um, then when I do go on maternity leave I'm going to change my frequency again and just do once a month because um, that's what felt comfortable um, I'm not going to have enough work to keep my VA on so I was like well at the very least if I don't manage to get everything to her so she can schedule them out for me through maternity leave um, I can manage to write a blog post and a newsletter once a month I can find the time <laughs> around a toddler and a baby to be able to put that out there um, once a month. So that's where I really shifted there. And again, it's about finding that balance for you. Um, I was just talking to some biz besties before this, and um, one of them was saying with her baby, like she was told that she had to mostly stay like lying down and recovering for five days. And she's looking at her midwife going like, are you kidding me? Like I'm a I'm a moving type of person, whereas for me I was really happy <laughs> to do the rest and recovery thing for five days and not really move and just kind of hang out with my newborn. So you know, different people are obviously going to have um, different needs and perspectives on this, and I think the really important part is to ask yourself a lot of these questions and figure out what feels doable for you. Um, I think it is easier the second time round. I think if I'd had a business and then gone on, had a baby for my first baby, um, I probably, the <laughs> overachiever that I am, I probably would have set expectations for myself that put pressure on me to come back or do more work than I was ready for at the time. So that's just something to be really aware of. Um, I love that there are blog posts out there 
and videos and content from other entrepreneurs talking about how they're planning for maternity leave or how their experience went because hearing lots of different stories like this can be really helpful in figuring out what might be right for us and and hearing those warnings from the mums who've been there to say, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself too early. Allow yourself that space to feel out how your new family is and what they need and how you feel about it and where your business fits um, into that new new model and you know i'm all about making sure your business fits with your lifestyle and adding a whole nother human being to your lifestyle is a really big deal <laughs> and you want to be able to you know figure out what that that different ideal is and then fit the business into there hi tiffany um <clears throat> all right so how will my business operate while i'm on maternity leave so there will be that regular content going out still but mostly um I'll be hanging out and having baby cuddles and I am giving myself those projects that I can pick up and put back down again. The other thing that's been really interesting and come about from my work at the beginning of the year is a lot of my existing clients, <laughs> a lot of my existing clients have been like, so when are you coming back from maternity leave? Are you going to be available? And um, it's made me really feel like, you know, taking almost a whole year off. Um, is probably not necessary. So in quarter four of this year, so after that kind of six month window, I'll be looking at sort of coming back a little under the radar, reconnecting with existing clients and sort of seeing if, if they um, need some help because you know they already know me. Um, if I have to juggle that with a with a baby, then um, that feels a lot more comfortable and doable with people who I've already worked with, rather than trying um, for myself to have my brain on, my business brain on, and my mum brain off, which is how I like to operate. Um, trying to arrange that situation for um, you know brand new clients so that's another way that I've allowed myself the option to sort of come back a little bit earlier and not do the all or nothing thing that I'm really really well known for <laughs> thanks Tiffany I will be here you can email me and help keep me up to date on what you're doing I might just reply at some really weird hour of the of the morning um, so that's another thing um, is to really talk about it with your audience and with your client base um, because you might start to see these different ways that you can uh, give yourself the option to come back in a, a softer, easier way than you were thinking. Um, so part of that is what do you need to prepare? And I talked a lot about preparing when I was talking about taking December and January off and how that went, and it's very similar. I've already said that you know I'm scaling back the frequency of my consistent content, and I'm also trying to um, write and record as much of it as possible so that um, my VA can schedule that out for me through most of the rest of the year. And then um, you know it'll be on me to do to do some of it. But knowing that in advance, not just a month or two in advance, but, you know, doing this sort of thinking um, in, in the happy second trimester place is probably a good time to do it. Um, where you can start to plan and right, I'm going to, you know, reduce my blogging frequency, but actually the work I'm going to do behind the scenes is going to stay the same so that I'm creating content going forward. Hi, Nina. Looking at my notes, um, the other question that I was so much more confident dealing with this year than I have been in past years is how much money do I need to make? So if I'm not um, actively working in my business, what capacity does my business have for passive income? What options are there for it to be making money while I'm not available or while I'm not doing what I usually do? And then also, uh, how much money do I just, how much money do I need to keep it afloat for that time? So there's still ongoing expenses. You know, I've still got to pay my accountant at tax time, which will fall around maternity leave. Um, I've still got some regular subscriptions um, for different services that are going to come out right through the year. Um, one tip that I had for you, which um, was really awesome that <laughs> it came up, it kept popped into my head, was to switch a lot of my subscriptions to, and rather than monthly, do an annual um, service because the money's needing to go out anyway. 
And often with an annual um, an annual subscription, you'll save a month or two um, worth of, of money, and then I don't have to think about it for 12 months. So I'm not going to have as much of a regular um, of regular expenses going out over that time I'm on maternity leave. So. One of the top tips is to do a complete inventory of, you know, what money is going where. Because the other thing is, if I'm not doing one-on-one -on -one clients, there's a certain amount of um, systems and support and expense that is around that, and I don't need to be um, paying for those while I'm not doing one-on-one -on -one client work. So there's options to pause memberships. There's options to downgrade memberships. There's options to cancel memberships for that time period and then come back. So there's lots of different ways that you can save money um, and also you know, reduce those overheads so that you don't need to make as much beforehand, before you go on maternity leave, and you don't need to have as much um, you know, passive or regular income coming through other income streams while you're on maternity leave. But ultimately, like, don't be afraid of the numbers. I would have been terrified of the numbers and avoided doing this whole exercise um, quite easily six to 12 months ago um, without having done the work in Denise Duffield Thomas's um, Money Boot Camp. So I'll pop a link to that because um, that has really taken away that sort of fear factor around looking at the numbers that far out and them adding up to bigger numbers that you might not be be used to when you're dealing with things in your business on a month to month basis. Um, but it's also allowed me to set a really exciting goal for um, February and March this year to bring in a certain amount up front so that I have a buffer so that um, you know other income streams that I have um, can be compensated for and things like that. So that's been um, amazing to have such a clear focus, um, not just a focus as far as a money goal goes, but knowing exactly what all of that money is going to be used for, for um, my business expenses, but also for childcare and stretch goals that may include my cleaner coming every week instead of every two weeks <laughs> and being able to get um, a meal service for a while while the baby is really small. Those kind of things um, are super motivating <laughs> when you've been there and done the newborn thing again and you're like, yeah, actually, I'd like someone to come and clean my house, um, you know, and I'd like like dinner to just be there um, for my husband to make every evening. Let's, let's be real here. Like, I'm not getting up to make that. Um, but having that motivation of not just, you know, what that money goal needs to be, but what that means for your lifestyle. Um, this has been one of the few times I've been able to get really clear on that and really firm on that is the goal and not keep not keep shifting the goalpost, right? Not keep saying, oh, I want a little bit more or I could do more. Um, so that's been really, really exciting. And then finally, I've talked a little bit about this already, but how will I come back from maternity leave? So particularly because I want to take such um, – a long time off there is that transition of all right eventually hopefully once the baby's six months old and it's like quarter four of this year I will get a feel for what their schedules like for what sort of activities my toddler's doing for how I'm feeling and I'll be able to craft an ideal work week that is going to give me um, the hours that I need and I feel um, the hours that I need or the hours I've been working pretty much since my daughter was six months old um, have been 15 to 20 hours. So that's what I'm going to be looking at um, as my kind of normal work week as 15 to 20 hours, um, which again feels totally doable. And it's, it's, a, it's a case, I've talked about this a lot, particularly in my um, Reclaim Your Time workshop where I actually show you what all my work weeks have looked like since my daughter was six months old until she was two, um, is using nap times, using evenings, getting childcare arranged, all of that kind of stuff. I know there are dozens of options for how it can work. And so it's all about, um, coming up with the best one um, that will work for us once um, once we meet our new little baby and know, know what they're going to be like. Um, and like I said, testing my ideal work week out is something I'm going to be trying in quarter four so that I can kind of come back fully um, next year.
my cat's just rearranging himself on the bed. Um, so testing out your ideal work week, I think, has got to be one of the number one things. Even when um, you don't have the variable of a new baby, um, whenever you set an ideal work week, it's always in theory until you start to work it. So test that out. I've already talked about having projects I can pick up and put back down again. So I do have this vision of sort of relaunching some things, um, really stepping up my game and filling the gaps that um, just don't get filled when you're working with clients and orders and actually doing the work of a business. Um, so I'm going to be doing a lot more work on my business um, rather than in my business or is it the other way around? Any hurdles, you know what I mean. With those projects, so I have those plans in place. Um, and then the one that I think is super important that I've actually done a lot of coming out of my December, January time off um, is have a plan to reconnect with your audience and let them know that you're back. <laughs> let them know, let them, you know, let them kind of meet virtually like your new baby. Um, you will, you know, I will be sharing my ideal work weeks <laughs> that I'm going to try out. Um, I'd really love to do. A video like this on the other side of maternity leave like I did for my time off over December January you know this is the plan before this is how much I was and wasn't able to work this is how I'm getting back into it you know this is what I thought would happen this is what didn't happen all of that kind of stuff so um, I'm really looking forward to doing that at some point you might get an interim one <laughs> around quarter four we'll have to see before uh, before 2019 but when I'm talking about reconnecting with your audience, it's not just, you know, upping your consistent content and visibility on, um, on social media and out to your list. It's actually, you know, reconnect with past clients. Go into, go into your CRM. I'm going to give you a link so you can, you can make sure you have a CRM. You know, go into that list of people who you've actually met. You know, you've had a a video call with them in my case um, you've been emailing back and forth you've kind of built a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you know email all of those people and say hey I'm back what's been going on would love for you to fill me in on where you're at now and of course if there's any way I can help you know you, you need only ask because I did that coming back from December January and a, it was super fun. <laughs> it was really nice. It's like coming back um, from a holiday when you're working in an office and you just spend the first like half a day, if not more, um, you know, catching up with people, saying hi, getting filled in on what they did over their break, what you did over your break, having that, that real connection and community. So that's something that I will absolutely be doing um, as I as I come back as well, is not only um, coming back and doing Facebook Lives, because you guys know I miss it when I don't do it, um, but, you know, connecting back with those one-on-one -on -one relationships um, and hopefully having all sorts of um, fun little behind-the-scenes projects that I've been able to dabble in and, and showing all of those off. So I posted some of the questions I asked myself um, in the description, but I'll just recap the ones I've run through today because um, it's just the mental process I went through to get really confident and comfortable um, taking maternity leave in such a long, long period. Um, and also um, communicating that to people and being sort of upfront and clear about where what I'm doing and when I am coming back and and um, just being okay with telling people that, <laughs> being okay with holding those boundaries for myself. So <clears throat> how long do you want to take off from your business? And have a think about what your ideal work week might look like. Um, I have a lot of flexibility in my lifestyle right now to be able to put, um, you know, to stay at home with my kids. <laughs> that's, that's what we've, we've been wanting. But, you know, you might not have as much flexibility and it might be, okay, I'm taking X weeks off and then the baby's going into daycare so many days a week or whatever. So you might have some, um, you might be able to firm up your ideal work week a lot um, quicker and earlier than I can, which, you know, happy side effect, <laughs> happy side effect, guys, you might, you might wish you could do the stay at home mum thing, but you know, there, there are some benefits. Um, 
And that, that, that's kind of the first stuff is, you know, set that ideal and then you're kind of testing that out and you're saying, right, how will my business operate while I'm on maternity leave? Um, it actually took me a lot of discussion with my biz bestie, with my VA to scale back my expectation on this one because um, I would have loved to keep up a weekly like content schedule, but, but no, just don't, just don't do it. Allow yourself to take that pressure off. So then once you've taken that pressure off and you've got something that's sustainable, you know, what do you need to prepare so that you don't need to be doing things um, while you're having newborn snuggles? And then do the numbers, do your numbers on how much the business is going to cost you to keep running over that time, what income might still come in even though you're not actively working, um, how you might be able to put other people in place to process orders. Um, so if you don't have any true passive income streams, um, you know, maybe you do keep your VA on board to troubleshoot um, customer service, or maybe you do keep someone on board to process and send orders. Um, there definitely could be um, outsourcing and automation, two of my favorite things, um, that you can do to keep income happening without you needing to be there. Um, and then how will you come back? And this is where I like to give myself a lot of options so that I'm not pressured um, about coming back on a certain date. So again, you could be different, but have a think about that question. Um, and there's a range of ways you can come back. Um, you know, a lot of my business to date has been around one-on-one -on -one clients, but I definitely have some, some products and other projects in the works that can bring in income and that I can work on um, that don't have that demand on my time and, uh, you know, would give me more flexibility as far as my work week and childcare and things like that goes. So it's definitely a creative time for your business, for your strategy, uh, for thinking about, you know, the income you're making and how you're making it and how much of your time is needed to make it because, um, I know one of the goals of my business is to allow you to live your dream lifestyle and to have a business that funds that. So it's a great exercise in testing out, you know, how close are you to that um, and, uh, and get more ideas. That's definitely something that setting, um, setting my money goal before maternity leave has got me is thinking out of the box and thinking about how I can leverage my time and what things I can create to make income um, in different ways that I just wouldn't be thinking about if um, I wasn't going on maternity leave. So that is how I'm planning to, to how I'm planning for maternity leave, how you can have a think about um, your own situation. And this applies not just to maternity leave, by the way, but if you're wanting to take any large-ish amount of time off from your business or to do something else, to go traveling, um, maybe to start, I don't know, start a side project to just diversify your lifestyle, whatever you want to do. Um, these sorts of questions can really help set you up for that. All right, like I said at the beginning, um, I, <laughs> it's a new journey for me going into being the mum of two, but for many it is not. And I would love to hear from you um, if you've been where I've been, <laughs> taken a longish maternity leave, had a business to keep operating, um, figured out how to juggle a, you know, a baby and a toddler. I'd love to know what worked for you and what, um, what I, else I might need to consider that I've not considered. So please um, drop a comment below or you know, email me. Honestly, get in touch, Karen at KarenHewson.com. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. I hope this has been really helpful. If you are pregnant, if you are thinking about having a baby and a business or multiple babies in a business, um, like I mentioned, I found it really helpful to see these kind of blog posts and videos and content out from other mumpreneurs sharing their stories and their journeys and what they have chosen to do for themselves. So I hope this helps you too. All right, have a fantastic week and I will catch you on another video.